Greetings and welcome to our video service for the fifth Sunday of Easter, coming to you from Trinity Episcopal Church in Lumberton, North Carolina. service begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son Jesus Christ to be the way, the truth, and the life that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. There are aspects of of our gospel for today that remind me of some of the counter-cultural sayings uh, about love in the 1960s. If you were around then, perhaps you might remember some of the popular quotes of the time, like, make love, not war. All you need is love. Peace, love, rock and roll. Love is a flower, let it grow. I remember Jimi Hendrix, of all people, said that we will have peace when the power of love overcomes the love of power. I remember the summer of 1967 was proclaimed the summer of love, and 100,000 people traveled to San Francisco for the be-in. I wasn't able to make it, but I heard it was uh, far out. Maybe all of this sounds outlandish or dated now, but I think the serious thinkers in the counter-cultural movement of the 1960s had a point. In the midst of all our problems that this country had at the time, including the military draft, the Vietnam War, political divisions, civil rights, social injustice, riots. The idea of love as a basis for a community was a noble one. They were saying if you can be in a community where love is the highest value of communal life, then you can avoid all the pitfalls of modern society. What I think is similar about that way of thinking and what John is saying in his 15th chapter is this emphasis on a community, in this case, the Christian community, that is based on love. In fact, John's 15th chapter poses challenging questions to today's Christian community about its self-identity, about who it really is. What does it mean for the church to live as branches of Christ the vine? What would the church look like if it could truly embrace this model. Clearly the image of Christian community that John paints is one of mutuality, one of interrelationship. It's helpful to, to visualize what the branches of a vine actually look like. In a vine, branches are almost indistinguishable from each other. It's impossible to determine where one branch stops and the other branch starts all run together as they grow out of a central vine. What this vine image suggests then about the Christian community is that there are no freestanding individuals in the community, but branches who encircle one another completely. The fruitfulness of each branch, what the branch produces, depends on its relationship to the central vine. 
What matters for John is that each individual is rooted in Jesus and so gives up individual status to become one of the many encircling branches. To live as branches of the vine is to belong to a family, a community, a unity that is shaped by the love of Jesus. To live according to this model, the church would be a community in which its members are known for acts of love that they do in common with other members. As the old hymn says, they will know we are Christians by our love. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, abide in me as I abide in you. This gospel reminds us to whom we belong with a clear visual image. The gospel calls us into a new and wonderful way of, of living, a way that welcomes the other, that is not done alone, but is done in community, a way that starts with love. In 1 John, there's a scripture that reads, everyone who loves is born of God. Well, as we continue to celebrate the glorious resurrection of our Lord, we are called to bear fruit and become disciples because we love. Though this is not always easy. How can we do this when we are still hurting from the pandemic? How can we do this when the news around us leaves us spiritually and emotionally drained how do we proclaim the good news about Jesus when we think there is just too much happening around us in the world? How do we do it? Well, the answer is never the same and will vary from person to person. Still, the text, the overall message of this gospel suggests this simple response, I think. We show up. We show up authentically as ourselves. We love others. We share the good news with others. We speak and act in ways that support this message of love. In our gospel, Jesus is addressing us. Twice he says, I am, reminding us that God knows our hearts. God created us. God knows what we are capable of for better or for worse. There is no need to hide from God, no need to hide those parts of ourselves of which we are ashamed, no need to use those ugly parts as excuses to stay away from God. Instead, this truth that God created us and knows us and believes in us draws us nearer to God. It allows us to see those parts that we think cannot be restored and instead allows us to go to our Father. Allows us to abide in God. The scriptures remind us that if we love one another, God lives in us, God abides in us. There is no secret that we can keep from God. But what is love? We could attempt to define it in many ways and we could provide examples of how we have experienced it, but it would still not be enough. We could look at our relationships and draw from those, but even then, we would not have a comprehensive definition. But we could look to the one who sent Jesus into the world to die for us, to create a clear example of love, a different kind of love, an embodied love, this love that liberates, a love that clears our eyes to see the injustices in this world, a love that empowers us to act in ways that seek the well-being of all, a love that makes us curious about the systems that oppress 
Now for some this may be difficult to understand, perhaps a concrete example is needed. So I'll try this one. Imagine the following. You walk into any nursery or vineyard and there you encounter life. You encounter different individuals caring and tending to the needs of every vine. The vine grower tends to them all, making no exceptions. The vine grower is aware of what each vine needs to bear fruit. The vine grower loves the branches. Similarly, God examines our hearts, provides for us, and can also remove those parts of ourselves that bear no fruit. If the vine grower worries about all the vines and knows that every branch can bear fruit, then the pruning becomes a special and necessary part of the growth process. Pruning will change the outcome for the vine, and it will change our outcomes as well. When we abide in God, we invite God into our lives, however messy that might be. When we abide in God, we, we are empowered to seek our place in the world, loving others, living into the mission of the church, restoring all people to unity with God and with each other in Christ. It is a slow and transformational process between the vine grower and the branches. In the eighth chapter of Acts, Philip, you may recall, comes upon an Ethiopian eunuch who is trying to read the Bible. He asks him if he understands what he is reading. And the eunuch replies, how can I understand unless someone guides me? Well, just like the Ethiopian eunuch, we will not always understand. We may ask, how can I unless someone guides me? These relationships between the vine grower and the branches require honesty and require us to let go of all those parts we think we can hide from God, from the world. How many times have we been afraid to ask for help? Or even embarrassed to ask, who can guide me? If we have learned one thing from the pandemic in the past year, it is that we cannot do this work alone. We have Jesus' example of love by being in relationship with people. We have the disciples' example of love by following Jesus, even amid their own shortcomings. All of these examples are needed. Our world needs people who are capable of this love, because a church that only condemns and only sees sin would not truly be the church. It would not be transformed by grace or mercy. There would be no opportunity for restoring our brokenness. As God transforms us, then we can transform the world. Oscar Romero was the Catholic Archbishop of San Salvador. He spoke out against social injustice and violence, violence that led to a civil war in that country. He was assassinated while celebrating mass by a right-wing assassin in 1980. Archbishop Oscar Romero of El Salvador knew what it meant to be transformed by love. He knew what it meant to be with the people of his country. And he knew that speaking the truth would likely cause his death. He knew that. He knew that loving the people of El Salvador meant that his actions and his words mattered. He is reported to have said, if a man knows how to detach from himself and knows how to love, he is a saint. If a man speaks too much about holiness, but does not know how to love, 
He is no saint. This is how we love. When we abide in God, God abides in us. God abides in our relationships. God transforms. God will allow us to bear fruit. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, walk with us as we celebrate the resurrection of your son, Jesus. Heal our hearts, guide our minds, and lead us to a place of restoration. May we seek spiritual renewal. May our hearts and minds serve you and your truth. And may we bear fruit in all that we say and do. Amen.
May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs>